Man, what a good night's sleep. It's 7 30 or 8 in the morning, and I must have slept nine straight hours last night. So good to get some good fashion, sleep, with everything kind of that's gone wrong recently. Um, we are heading now into our van, and we're pushing north into Namibia. Hey. The misadventure continues. Every morning when I drive a car because of my bus driver days, I walk around the car and I kick every tire. This morning, I got to tire number four and it's flat. been at this for over an hour failing um, the tires just not coming off I've loosened it I've lifted the jack I, everything's normal but the tires just yeah it just doesn't come off and I'm not really sure why um, we also have a problem that we have no service here and it's Sunday so we walked out to the road where there's service and called uh, help but there's nobody to help because it's Sunday and all the tire repair places are closed so we called Avis and Avis said that there's the nearest office is three and a half hours away so things are looking bleak but they'll take care of themselves eventually so I guess it's kind of a matter of just hanging out two hours later and the tires fixed we met an overlander that actually overlanded all the way down from um, the UK. The problem with the tire was it was just totally seized on. And I tried hammering it, I tried doing everything to get it off and I couldn't. But just two of us hammering away at it, eventually it came loose. We got it off and uh, looks like we're on the road again now. We don't have a spare tire though. And the roads in Namibia are paved basically the whole way, so hopefully it'll be fine. It's never really reassuring driving in Namibia without a spare tire just because there's so little traffic. I think it's the second least densely populated country in the world behind Mongolia. So it's gonna be, yeah, we're gonna hope that we don't get another flat on the way up. So we've crossed the border, we're in Namibia, and yeah, it's so good to be back. We're heading about 300 kilometers north to a place called Quiver Tree Rest Camp, which is a really, really photogenic place that I've never had the chance to photograph that I'm taking our participants on the photo workshop to, uh, you know, in a couple days. So I thought it'd be cool to go and check it out and scout it out. So cross the border, headed that way. Unscathed, we made it to Quiver Tree uh, Rest Camp. 
That's a quiver tree back that way, that crazy looking tree. This place is an absolute mecca for star photography. Last night, at the end of the episode, you saw the night lapse, the star lapse I did. Here, you just get these big open skies that are so clear, you've never seen more stars than you get here. So that's the plan. Tonight, scout out some of these locations for star photography really close to the rest camp, and then tomorrow morning, find a sunset, sunrise spot somewhere in Giants Playground, which is five kilometers down the road. Um, the plan right now, hopefully, is to try to set up the tent. I bought like a screw that'll hopefully work, hopefully work, on the issue we had with the tent. And I guess, wish me luck, wish us luck. I'm gonna make Jody do all the work, so wish Jody luck. For a quote unquote fast tent, I think they call it an easy setup tent, that was serious work. Definitely not a tent you could set up alone. But now that it's set up, it looks awesome. It looks like, yeah, it looks like home. I think it took us about 20 minutes total time to set up. Doesn't look super stable in the wind, but I think it'll make it, yeah, it'll make a nice home tonight. There's actually two rooms in this tent. Let me kind of show you actually. There's this one tent. <laughs> This one room, and then there's a second room. I'm not gonna unzip it because I'm lazy, but there's that room and then another room. So Jody and I can have separate rooms. And then we've got this awning on the outside, which I don't think in the future we'll set up just because it never rains in Namibia. So we'll just kind of leave it open and can kind of sleep under the stars. But it will work nice as shade if it gets hot. Definitely not an easy tent to set up, but now that it's up, kind of love it. We just made a run into town to eat. We're here and the stars are out like crazy. But unfortunately, so is a half moon. There's still lots of stars. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. In fact, it might help out because it might light up some of the landscape here, but it's dark and it's hard to do these videos to vlog in the dark. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go just right behind the tent, shoot a couple shots at this one quiver tree I see there, and then I'm gonna take you into my laptop and talk about how I'm editing these photos really quickly and maybe talk about the photos themselves as well. So I'll see you from the other side on my laptop. Okay, here in a, in a hotel in the future, talking about this image, talking about the images shot at Quiver Tree, just really quickly. It, the star photo didn't go the way I planned. The moon was out and it looked cool and it helped, but I think I probably should have waited later in the evening to shoot, just because it's kind of weird light. The light just looks weird and it kind of killed the Milky Way. And the Milky Way later in the night kind of goes horizon. It goes kind of flat along the horizon, which is the reason I shot at the time I did, along with the fact that we had to get up early in the morning the following day to get out. So I kind of just, I kind of just shot the images and I kind of just wanted to location scout. So let me flip you into the laptop right now and let's talk about this image. I shot a bunch of star images and I just couldn't find something I liked. So this is an edited image, you see, it's good. But you can see this light is just way too bright. This is part moonlight, part some light that's coming from over on the left hand side of the image from the campground. And it just made everything look really yellow. And if even if I kind of cooled it down, it just didn't do anything. It just made the sky look more and more ridiculous. So. I like the general idea of the shot, really, really simple with the Milky Way pointing in at the tree, but it just wasn't there. I felt like it needed something else, so I added myself to the frame. There was these benches down here, and I kind of just went and sat on one of the benches. And I want to kind of walk you through, I guess now, how I edit this photo because it is very, very simple. This is totally unedited. It was shot at ISO 6400. 30 seconds at f2.8, which you can't see on the 14 millimeter. It doesn't record that data on the Rokinon. You can see from the histogram, it's underexposed, which is fine because of the night sky. So the first thing I do is I punch the contrast. It's the very, very first thing I'm gonna do this image is punch the contrast. With star photos, if you soften the contrast, 
it kind of makes the sky look like it has too many stars. If you punch the contrast, it, well, you get contrast in, this, in the stars. I'm also going to paint myself here. So this is the adjustments brush. I'm going to take this off iron, Iris Enhance, which is for the eyes. And I'm just going to bump the exposure a little bit and the shadows a little bit. And I'm going to make this a tiny little brush like this. And I'm just going to paint myself a little bit just so I stand out a bit more. I'm also going to add a little bit of contrast to that so it doesn't look too out of place. So now you can see me sitting there. The next thing I'm going to do is pump the highlights. You're normally used to seeing images where people drop the highlights because they're trying to keep the dynamic range. With stars, I really like to bring out the highlights. It just makes everything look brighter. Shadows, I'm going to just touch up a little bit to, keep, to again help bring out some of this foreground. But I'm also going to drop the blacks down because I like the contrast and I like the sky to look a bit, well, a little bit more black and white. The whites are also really important with stars because, well, the stars are white. And so we're going to bring them up just a bit. Um, Dehaze is really important for stars for most people but just because you see how much it brings out that, that micro contrast in the sky. I don't do it because look at how much it destroys the image. There's ghosting around the tree here. There's ghosting on the horizon. It brings in these weird colors like pinks and greens and stuff like that. But we'll get back to what I'm going to do with the dehaze later. I'm going to bring out the vibrance all the way because I want to. I'm going to bring out the saturation a little bit because I want to. I'm going to take the adjustments brush again. I'm going to remove this from custom and set it to saturation and instead of upping the saturation I'm going to drop the saturation on the tree just a little bit just to kind of kill out some of this yellow that's just a little bit overpowering and distracting like that hit done and then that looks like a pretty done image but I want to bring out this Milky Way even more so again for the third time going into the adjustments brush we're going to grab this dehaze tool, put it at about 15, and we're just going to trace along the Milky Way. And by tracing along the Milky Way with the dehaze tool, it really brings out the contrast of the Milky Way. Look at that coming out. Uh, make sure when you do this that you have that buffer, which you find down here. The buffer size, you want it to be as big as you can, sorry, the feather size, as big as you can so that it doesn't sh it doesn't kind of leak out and it's a, a truer a truer blend so you just run that right down the middle and you can even now also add a little bit more contrast if you want not too much because you don't want to make it look ridiculous drop the blacks again just a tiny bit because you don't want to make it look ridiculous bring out the highlights just a little bit because you don't want to make it look ridiculous and now we have basically the final image some people will play around now, let's hit done. Some people will play around with the tint to make it a little bit more colorful one way or another. So they might cool the image down to bring out the blue in the sky. I like it a bit like that, just a, a hint of purple. And it's really simple that it wasn't, definitely wasn't the ideal scenario for star photography, but it kind of still works. We, let's go to the before and after. That's not the before and after. Let's go to the before and after and you can see the difference before and after. This, the Milky Ways really come out. I don't think the foreground looks too ridiculous. You get nice contrast, nice color, and it works. It's not anything I'm going to stick on my wall or anything like that, but hopefully it gives you guys a little bit of an insight into how I've edited that image to make it you know, make it work, make it respectable. The stars in Namibia are insane. Even when the moon went down, the moon had been down for an hour or so, I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and it was so bright from the stars, you could still see. You could still walk around just from the starlight. It was insane. So we will do some more star photography here in Namibia tomorrow on tomorrow's episode, which might be a bit delayed because uh, we're running around Namibia with a photo tour. Uh, it might be a bit delayed, but on that episode, we are heading to Windhoek to pick up said photo group and start that trip. So there's lots of fun coming up. There's Quiver Tree, there's some cheetahs, there's Sosis Flay, there's Coleman's Cop, the ghost town, just tons of fun stuff coming up. So hope you stay tuned for that stuff and I'll see you guys on tomorrow's episode. Peace.